I think it started off when I was about in year 10 and I was actually watching The Apprentice and I saw one of the contestants was a quantum physicist and I thought that sounds really, really cool. I did physics and maths in school and they were certainly much more appealing because they're you know, very rigorous and objective. You can walk down the road and you can see the different applications of physics every day and it's also not just the things you see but the things you can't see and the things that defy your intuition. What I find particularly exciting about physics is that it's the study of the largest galaxies, the structure of the universe, tiny particles, um, superconductors where the electric current goes round and round forever without a battery, a whole series of magical things really that seem magical but aren't, which can be understood and can be studied and can be explained. I think at Oxford we don't get too many options in the first three years and uh, many other universities they we do get to choose even in the first year what do you want to do what do you want to specialize in but i think not having the choice for the first three years means we can get a really good broad understanding of physics a lot of people when they first arrive they want to do astrophysics they want to look at black holes or or they want to look at particles because that's the kind of books they've read but actually there's a lot more to physics than that and I think the core material that they do in the first few years helps them to make intelligent choices about which options to, to go for. You need to learn all the different ways of solving differential equations, which is mundane as hell, so that you can go on and build a quantum computer or study very early universe cosmology or do any of the, this whole array of amazing like frontier research. I think when students first arrive, some of them, perhaps in the first few weeks, think gosh, this is rather easy. We've all done slightly different things, right? So the first year is a nice sort of overview to basically bring everyone up to the same sort of level. As a second year student, I mean, my timetable wasn't too different from what it was as a first year. I mean, on a weekly basis, Lectures are almost always held in the morning, so you have three or four hours of lectures between breakfast and lunch. Having a really, really enthusiastic lecture really does change how you feel about the subject. And the, one of the great things about Oxford is that all these lecturers, they do love physics and they love telling you about physics. Typically, maybe one or two days a week is associated for labs. I usually have labs on Mondays and Tuesdays, so I get into the lab about 10 a.m. and then work throughout an, an experiment, they're two days long each, so it leaves quite a lot of room to do your own investigations, to have a look, to really try and grasp and understand what you're doing. In the evening, that's when you have time to, you know, do problems that you've been assigned for tutorials. You really have to do some proper physics in the experiments. You need to work out what will happen to your system. No one checks up on you on a daily basis to see where you've been or what you've been learning or, or what you've been doing. So it gives you um, quite an intellectual freedom to go and pursue the things that you're most interested in. In the four-year MPhys course, you have to do a research project as part of that degree. And that's a very exciting thing to do because you get to join a research group and you get to do something which is new. In fourth year you get to choose two out of seven options to specialise in and these are options like condensed matter physics, theoretical, particle, all really really exciting topics. People that don't enjoy doing physics will never understand the people that really enjoy physics, you know. If you talk to someone that, that you know really gets off on solving differential equations, if you're a classicist, I mean that's, you're just never going to be able to you know, see eye to eye with that person. So that's why sometimes I think humanities think we're weird. I think being able to be in a situation where you're surrounded by people who have the exact same passion as you, the same drive in life to learn about the universe is incredible. And you have to put the pieces of the jigsaw together and maybe you have to put those pieces together in an unusual way and that's where the creativity comes along. I think the key resources that we have in Oxford for physics are actually the people. We have an incredible staff. I think we have some of the great experts on various areas of physics who are here in Oxford. 
and having the opportunity to study with them is extremely exhilarating, I think. You find that all of the really important academics that don't work in Oxford are often invited over to give talks or seminars or this sort of thing, so you end up meeting, meeting them all. These professors, they have written the books that are used in courses across the world. It was just incredible. We have an accelerator on site. We have the highest magnetic fields in Britain. Uh, we have laboratories that do nanotechnology. We have a whole range of state-of-the-art facilities. The main thing that has helped me a lot is the massive amount of libraries in Oxford. There's, I think there's over 100 libraries. We also have a lot of interaction with labs around the world like CERN or the big telescopes on Hawaii where scientists here go out and visit. What makes Oxford Physics very special I think is the tutorial system. The tutorial system is good fun actually. It's nice. It's it, not to put people off, it's sort of like your interview, like again and again and again, right? And, and you, you get the hang of it. I mean, the first few tutorials I had were nerve-wracking, right? You show up and there's like you and maybe one or two other people and professor. Each week here you have probably two, two tutorials um, for which you have to complete problem sets. I'd spend about 10 hours per sheet for tutorial, like per problem set for every tutorial. So that would be then 20 to 30 hours depending on how much work I'd get. And then maybe doing a bit of extra reading around as well just to make sure I understand things. That would be another 10 or so hours. So it's quite a lot of work but is very, very exciting. When I first came, uh, my tutor gave a really interesting sort of overview of what the, what the course was supposed to be like. And he said, you have 24 hours in a day. So eight of those should be about work and eight of those should be about sleep because those are the two most sort of important things. And then he said, yeah, you've got eight hours to really do whatever you want. The course was a lot harder than I expected at first. It's a massive drop into the deep and you're just there thinking, I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. Because obviously many of the people coming to study physics at Oxford have been the best in their class or one of the best. So you come quite big headed thinking it'll be fine, it'll be just like A level and it's not. When I was younger, maybe I was too proud, but you didn't ask questions that seemed stupid because, you know, it's embarrassing, right? But, you know, you come here and you study and you look at all the people that win Nobel Prizes and you sort of start to realise they all won those prizes because they asked stupid questions, right? Questions that no one else thought to ask. Many times at school I was just like, I don't understand this, I'll never understand it, it's over. But here at Oxford I've learned if I don't understand something, that's, that's not the end of it. There is a way to understand something and there is always someone who's willing to make me understand it. I think we're looking for people who can think and can think creatively on their feet about something that they've maybe never seen before. I was really prepared for something really abstract, something ridiculous and something terrifying and it wasn't at all. There's no questions, especially for physics, no questions like why did you choose physics or what are your hobbies? No, they don't have time for that, right? The interviews are very efficient. Those things may be important but we're not asking them. What we really want to do is to talk about physics to the candidates. We want to ask them various problems and we want to help them with those problems. My first question was, is, are you Scott? And I said, yes. And the second question was, differentiate this function. And I went, okay. And you start, you know, you start either pen and paper or on a whiteboard. We won't ask you in the admissions interview about all sorts of random things, we won't. But if you've mentioned something on your UCAS form, we very well might ask you about it. So if there's some statement that you've made there, be prepared to back it up. Actually, I came away from my interviews having really enjoyed them, right? I learned a lot from my interviews. It was like having a tutorial situation. And I think the interview is a really good first step in gaining the confidence just to ask if you're stuck on something. I opened the letter from Oxford and I cried a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that was just purely out of joy or because it was just a combination of everything that day, but I was so happy. Something that would have been really nice to know before applying is that people here are pretty normal. 
I think some people think that Oxford isn't for them, either because it's filled with people who do not come from their kind of background. And that's quite wrong. We have people from every kind of background, from all sorts of different parts of the United Kingdom and elsewhere. It's a very good social mix of different people and everybody fits in. Quite a number of our students will go off and do research, PhDs either here in Oxford or in other places. Some go into teaching, some go into research and industry, some go into uh, the financial sector, although fewer perhaps now than did. I decided to aspire towards theoretical physics because it's a nice blend of physics and maths. I would love to, after my Oxford degree, go on, do a PhD, preferably at Oxford still. If you want to study physics at university, then why not give Oxford a go? If you feel that you're bright enough and you have enough ambition, then why not apply? I could not imagine myself doing anything anywhere else.